And then we got probably the best team we're going to play of the year. I mean, I think they're ranked fourth in the country. Uh, my USA Today coach, Paul, I've had him at two for a long time. Um, and uh, I think they're, you know, I've watched them earlier in the year. I've had a chance to peek at them. And, uh, you know, Travis Jordan, Mike Norvell's done an you know, outstanding job there in his time there. Um, and uh, he, he's an excellent coach. He's also uh, the offense coordinator. I think, you know, Jordan Travis is playing about as high level as any quarterback in the country. And, uh, you know, we got, we got a great football team, and that's kind of where our focus is going right to them. And, you know, focused on that last night after our team meeting, we, we break up and go uh, offense, defense again and just get onto the new page. And I think that's always a good way to end our meeting. So uh, we're ready to go, and it's Monday, so let's go. Questions? Uh, just looking at your upcoming opponent, what, what stands out? I mean, there's so much that stands out, but what do you think is going to be the most difficult thing to defend with this Florida State offense? Ooh. You know, it's Wilson on one side and Keon Coleman on the other side. And Travis, I mean, you know, you cover those guys, he's taking off running. Um, he is athletic. Uh, he's smart. Um, obviously, you know, Coach Norvell, you know, does a great job. You know, and again, we played him and, you know, we played Travis in 2000, what was it, uh, 20? Uh, during the COVID year and got him down there and uh, he ended up getting hurt before the half, I believe. Um, and uh, he had a big run on us early and we kind of got experience from that first run that he took 80 yards or whatever it was. We had a defensive end run up the field and you learn. And it's a play you didn't see and you learn and then all of a sudden we shut it down and, and play. But, you know, Travis is a different player in 2020 than he is right now, correct? I, mean, I don't know how many games they won in 20. I haven't gone back and look at that. Um, but you look at where he is and what experience has done for him, period. You know, we can talk Kenny Pickett, you can talk him as well. He's playing at a high level. He doesn't make, what's he got, 18 TDs and two interceptions. The guy doesn't make mistakes. Um, and he's confident. And, you know, the guy plays with swagger, too. I mean, he, you know, he gets a run. I mean, he looks like he's a linebacker. You know, just the emotion. He plays with emotion and passion. And, um, you know, he, he, he is the leader of that football team, guaranteed. After uh, sports information being put out last night, you're the only team in the country. Uh, less than 50% completions. Who is? Florida State. <laughs> They've allowed less than 50%. Less than 50% complete that. What makes their secondary so good? You know, every good secondary has a good D-line, right? Uh, they got some athletic ends that rush up the field. You know, one from the University of Alb Albany uh, that's a, a game wrecker. Um, he's, you know, uh, he's special. And, you know, but they got, they got athletes all over the field. Um, uh, they're athletic. They're well coached. And, and, and you know, I've had great conversations with Mike Norvell through the years, and uh, he, he, you know, his team plays with toughness, physicality, um, and they believe. And, um, you know, they play hard. And that's, you know, what our football team is like, and I think he's got the same kind of thing. Pat, did you worry about that belief being affected by what happened on Saturday? Not at all. Uh, not at all. You know, um, you know, again, coaches aren't happy with Saturday, and, and neither are the players. The players know. They watch the tape. You know, it's our job as coaches to put our guys in position to make plays. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Uh, sometimes we're in position to make plays and we don't make them. That's physical. You know, we talk about structural is probably a coach. Man, that was a terrible call versus that play they had. Um, and, then, and then there's the, the, you know, the physical and the mental. And uh, there were some physical errors and there's mental errors. And that's, you know, where our guys aren't happy about how they executed. And, you know, sometimes really good teams like Notre Dame. Notre Dame was a good football team. I mean, really good. Um, and I um, mean, they lost to lost to Ohio State by three at home, um, and um, you know gave up 17 points to the Buckeyes, and and, um, and 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 knocked the heck out of USC. So it's a good football team. We didn't get beat by you know an average football team. When you when you have a you play a lot of young guys this year, or guys at least that are new here, vice versa. When they have that sort of struggles, do you have to approach that differently than if you had a veteran team that had sort of been through the ups and downs, and you could say, look, I'm sure that they're going to be they're going to bounce back yeah i'm not really i mean you got to treat them all the same because the standard is a standard right i mean every saturday we go out we believe we're going to win okay and again like i said it's my fault we, mentally we got to be locked into the point we we execute and and you know ultimately it comes down to to motivation and, and being you know totally locked into what your job is and and whether they were or whether they weren't still my fault if it doesn't get done how do you uh, address some of the errors that were made on special teams on saturday you know, just keep going back to the drawing board. Um, you know, I was understanding one of Junko's punt hit a wire up there, which I would hope someone would see. I don't think I'd put an electric fence up there, you know, hit the, you know, that sky cam or whatever. Um, you know, uh, we had a couple high snaps, which we haven't had all year, but I've seen high snaps go over people's heads and not caught, be caught. Uh, so there's a lot of good things on tape, guys. I mean, when you look at it offensively, defensively, there's some shots we missed. 
um, you know, that we threw to and missed. There's some shots offensively that, you know, we looked to the wrong side of the field. And again, it comes with experience and understanding coverages and, 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 you know, just taking your time and, you know, in the pocket and not rushing your throws. But when there's pressure at times, you know, with, 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 with guys coming off the edge or coming up the middle, uh, sometimes that happens. But some of the special teams, Amanda, that um, we got to address is, is, is just a finish. I mean, that first, uh, that first punt return, you know, which was a you know, punch in the gut. You know, we had two guys on attack, we just didn't finish. And again, I give that guy credit because he's a good punt returner. Um, but, you know, th those are things I think our guys are disappointed. It's not like we were nowhere to be found, you know. And again, our job is to, you know, we had a good net on that one. Um, and like I said, I, I may have mentioned this after the, the, um, after the uh, press, after the game, uh, there's nobody I trust more than MJ Demonstrator to return a punt. And, you know, he's got a nice fair catch at the 10-yard line uh, one time, and he doesn't call fair catch. But I think, you know, guys become desperate at times to make a play, and MJ's a playmaker. And, you know, sometimes we can't, you know, you got to take that, that Superman cape off your back and, uh, and make sure you just play within the framework of, of, the, of the team. And, and uh, you know, a lot of faith in him, and, you know, he's just trying to make a play, and you can't do that. At the last two years, you've gone to the portal to get quarterbacks. Do you feel a little bit better about the position this year with, with Christian? Feel great with Christian. Feel great with Nate Yarnell. You saw how he performed when he got in there too. So you know, like I said, you know, I said that back in camp, and you know, each one of them continue to grow every week. You know, is Christian where he is right now compared to where he was game one or in fall camp? He's he's way far ahead. I think every week he becomes more confident in what he's doing and how he's doing it, and every week he sees a different coverage or sees this or that and has a better feel of what he's got to do. Is only going to make him better. And I think um, you know, I feel I feel good with that quarterback room. I think we asked you about. Just about every week, but I'm curious, what does Rodney need to do to get more opportunities, to get more carries? In the game? Rodney ran well on Saturday. Um, Rodney ran well, well. We, you know, um, you know, we obviously got into throwing it a little bit more than we'd like to. Um, however, you know, the game plan going in was really to throw it. And we, you know, if you go back and watch the tapes, you know, it's slow motion. You know, I don't know if you guys don't have the the all eleven like we do. Uh, I don't think you do. Um, but you know, you watch TV copy, you don't see really where the routes are, what they did. Um, you know, even on the pick six, you know, we, we hope he hits the, 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 the hole shot, which is there's a guy wide open. You know, they're playing a, you know, a two trap, but that comes with experience and, and uh, every quarterback's gone through that.